Live from San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering QuickBooks Connect 2016. Now, here are your hosts, Jeff Frick and John Wall. Well, I hope you're ready for high energy. I think we have high energy for you here. Welcome back inside San Jose, the convention center here, along with Jeff Frick, I'm John Walls. We're here on theCUBE and uh, bringing you uh, live streaming coverage throughout the day here at QuickBooks Connect 2016. I talked about energy. Our next guest came up to us. We didn't have met and, and all of a sudden started high-fiving everybody in the crew and said, <laughs> we are ready to rock this place. So I guess we are. Uh, Don Brolin, who is the founder and the CEO of Powerful Accounting, a Connecticut-based accounting firm now joins us, and Don, are you ready to rock this I'm place? I'm ready to crush this. We're going to hammer this right out. <laughs> no yeah. question. We're going right. to teach. Tell teach. us a little bit about your firm. So you started as a you know, one-person shop, a solopreneur, right. and, and now you've evolved to where you've got, I believe you said seven uh, people working for you, three right. of those in a virtual environment. So tell us about all that, about that growth, and about the challenges of having that, that virtual office set up for right. three of your key employees. Well, it's been easy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've been growing and growing and really starting to laser focus on our practice. And so we do provide bookkeeping services, tax return services, you know, the basic accounting firm that does all those kind of things. What we're really passionate about is IRS representation and helping civil or criminal cases, uh, helping them get out of that, hopefully keeping them in a civil environment. Um, but it has been tough. We've had policies and procedures. We've had to create transparency, virtual people where they're tr you, know, you have to make sure they can still be part of your team even though they're not in your office. And so that's, a, that's been a really big focus for us is to continue our, we are team rolling, that's how we roll, rolling with rolling, right? <laughs> so, um, so we love it and we, we really try to have that team atmosphere. I don't call them employees, I call them t my team members because they truly are my team and, I, and I, they're like family. And I think that's one of the things with our core values is that we've really tried to define who we really are as a firm and that has, that has revolutionized our practice because we really know who we are. And I think everyone needs to do that. So was there that. a moment where you redefined and decided we're going to be something specific versus just kind of general purpose accounting? And, and if so, right. what was the, the catalyst for that? So interestingly enough, I had built a relationship with a law firm, Green and Sklar's, they're in Connecticut, and they're just, they're my boys, I call them, but they're great people and they're, they're passionate about helping their clients get out of the issues that they're in. And so he and I just kind of, Eric Green and I, just kind of formed a great friendship and, and he said, you know, will you do all of our accounting for our clients when we have cases come in? I have had experience testifying in court. Um, unfortunately, on that one, I was on the IRS's side, which is good, because you know why? Here's the secret about that. Now I know what they look for because I'm watching them build a case against somebody and helping them build a case, so I know what they're looking for. I know what they know and what they don't know. I think so Jeff will want to talk to you later, by the way. <laughs> so fun, like bulletproof vest, eye black, we go in hot, you know what I mean? Down on her elbow. <laughs> yeah, we're totally coming in hot. It's awesome, so that, that became with just a passion, right? So one of our core values is passionate, be passionate. And we're passionate about our clients. We're pa I'm passionate about my team succeeding as a group. Definitely our clients are just so important to us. But what about the, the virtual environment though? I mean, dealing sure. with that, because you know, a lot of people like that face-to-face. -face. You know, they, they like to know, you know who's doing what, especially when you're working with numbers, and clients want to work with people face-to-face. -face. So how have you been able to bridge that or maybe uh, allay those concerns sure. to the point that you can have success? Yeah, you know, it's obviously the technology is just everywhere, right? So for us, we FaceTime with our clients. So if we're going over a p &L, we may do a go-to-meeting, but we're, ta we're still seeing each other, and it's as if we, meet together in person all the time. The technology's allowed us to do that. Of course, cloud technology, QBO is, you know, we don't have to be on their machine or like the day, back of the day when we had to log on to their machine and take it over. Like that's just so ridiculous. Please don't do that. So that's a great recommendation for people. So we take clients who are willing to accept how we work with them and we want to make sure that it's personal because it really means a lot to us to help them grow. I mean, that's what we're here for. We're not here to book entries anymore. It's not. It's a whole different ball game now with, the, with technology. And, and have you changed kind of your billing relationship? We've heard about that, you know, to get away from the hours-based billing to a 
retainer right. or some other kind of mechanisms that define your right. billing relationship with your clients? We have a great client onboarding process. And we defined it because I said, you know what, I, I love clients. And I, I love, they're obviously, we don't make money without them, right? Well, without them, yeah, you, you wouldn't them, have much of a business. It'd be kind of boring, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know, we have a basketball court right outside our office. Very so not, we, we would just do that. Very profitable. It yeah. would, exactly. Right, right, right. So one of our processes, we teach them how we work. So they may not be totally familiar with all the technologies that we use, but from the first call that comes in, they understand that we're going to exchange an engagement letter, we're going to exchange a payment authorization form, you're going to pay a deposit up front, and that's going to happen through our document management system right from the beginning. So we don't exchange paper with them. It's all done electronically, right signature. Right from the beginning. Right from the beginning we teach them, this is how we exchange information together. And they get it or they don't, most of the time they do. People are, are pretty good. Nobody with a flip phone, we won't take clients who have a flip phone. <laughs> Well, they have to have a smartphone. Uh, but anyway, so we kind of vet through that process and, and I loved your question about the billing. So with the bookkeeping, it's easy to do value billing, right? Because it's and as you're getting better, you're making more money because you're not billing by the hour. With the IRS representation work, we bill by the hour because those cases, you you don't know what's going to happen. It's, an, it's a real important niche area that even bookkeepers, accountants, CPAs, EAs, anybody can get involved in that kind of work. It's a huge market out there. The attorneys don't want to do that. They're tax attorneys, you know? They, they want to do their law part. So they're looking for more people like us. And that relationship's been, I, I'm just so blessed with that relationship. And do you need an attorney just legally to get involved in that process? Do they need uh, so, you know, somebody that's passed the bar to represent them or not They necessarily? don't necessarily. So okay. a lot of the times we'll come in and we deal with the agents 100%. So we're on the, on the POA with the attorney. We're under a, likely a Covell letter, which means the IRS can't bring us to court if it's a criminal case because we're protected by that relationship with the attorney because we're not natively. So that process that we go through, we handle the agents a lot of times. And that's a skill to handle an IRS agent. Because if you think about it, they, they want to get their job done. They have inventory. Inventory to them are these cases. Case load. So they, when you are more open with them and overwhelm them with information, they're so much more likely to remove a penalty, an accuracy penalty, a fraud penalty, because you as the accountant are so open with the information. And it's, it's just, it's a relationship that you have to groom them and get to know them. We give them coconut milk if they want coconut milk. You know, whatever <laughs> you want, man, we got you, right? And that's, I mean, that's how we approach it. So it's, it's obviously better if you don't get in trouble with the IRS in the first place. So I'm just curious from your point of view, and there's a lot of tools here represented sure. on the floor beyond just QuickBooks Connect. How do people usually get in trouble? I mean, if you could get ahead of some of your clients that have gotten in trouble, what right. are the two or three kind of really key things that aren't that complicated that will help them avoid the trouble in the first place? Definitely one thing is documentation. I think with all the apps that we're using out there, um, it doesn't matter, Expensify, all, the, all of those T-sheets, tracking your mileage, mileage tracking, all of those things that most business owners don't want to do. Mm -hmm. The technology is there, they just don't know it. And so you'll, you, know, you prepare a tax return, here's one of them, mileage. You've got to track your mileage. Don't, you know, oh, I, I drove around 30,000 miles last year. Okay, so how much of that was, I'm always doing business. No, you're not, okay? <laughs> you're not always doing business. So you have to really work with your client to say, hey, listen, you've got to have documentation. So we work very paranoid. Our firm is, I say we work very paranoid because we see these cases that happen. And they're not necessarily, they're not happening to our clients necessarily, but that documentation, home office deduction, like these are just standard things where you've got to be careful. Home office deduction, if you're on your kitchen table, that's not a home office, right? Like so people are, I work from home. Okay, well you can't work, I mean who doesn't work and watch football? We all do, right? But just having Thursday that night. documentation and, and there, every solution is here that you, that you need for your business owners. And I always tell them do one at a time. Pick one application, one big pain point or something you're not tracking now. Receipts, you have to have receipts. I know that sounds crazy, but the IRS will accept an electronic receipt. So if you, it's, it's interesting, I've done some research. Take the They've, picture, right? They literally will accept whatever the standard of technology or the standard practice of the times, if you will, okay. um, in the receipt in whatever format. Because it used to be you have to have all the pieces of paper, but they don't, 
they don't require that and anymore. And they're all thermal prints, and they don't last and for they don't seven last. years. Or Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So going from, from when you start, how long ago did you start the company? So I'm actually on my third rendition. All right. So you know, we don't want to do things once, we want to do them three times. I started my first bookkeeping company in 1999. I had two babies that I love so much. Uh, two babies under two, so I said, oh honey, how about you raise them? I'm going to go start a firm. <laughs> and so um, I, that's when I started, and it was just a guy who was actually building an in-law apartment for my parents, and he was like, hey, my bookkeeper isn't good. You have an accounting degree, right? Can you do my books? I'm like, okay. <laughs> And that's literally how it all started. A, so you, you've gone from that to where now you have maybe as many as eight now uh, uh, in your firm as of January 1st. The growth pains that you had along the way, yes. I mean, share those with, with you know, other small business sure. owners out there about what you've learned, mm -hmm. and then maybe from a QuickBooks perspective, those pain points that for you, mm -hmm. how they have been solved or how you're addressing them through various QuickBooks services. Sure, so, and I love that question because uh, and every journey is a is a journey, and and we've I've personally gone through an, an amazing journey in 16 years, and I'm looking forward to the next 16, right? Um, but the pain points for me, one of the biggest pain points for me was running a business and then having, how do you get home and get to your kids and get to your, your family, right, and your husband and everything. So that was a really big struggle for me because you're, I'm doing the technical work because I, when I was by myself, I'm doing the billing. I have, I'm billable, I got to be billable, but I still have to run the company. I have to manage it and administrate it. So when it's just yourself, it's really, really tough and you, you lose and you sacrifice, and we all know that. Michael Phelps talked about that yesterday. I mean, we sacrifice when we build a business, and so you have to accept that. And so, um, the more you can kind of get that support team around you to build a business is really important. And then when you add on staff is really, it was really where the rubber meets the road, and it's always the first one that's the hardest, because you, you know, a lot of times people go into it without, into it, get it? Into it, Come caught on, that. you I got it, it, you got me. Right in there. No, I was, that was so I was, smooth, yeah, I was, it was there. really smooth. <laughs> I was there, because um, we're all on the same team. Of course we are, <laughs> yeah. except you like the Nationals, but we'll talk about that we'll, later. We'll get around right? to that. We'll later. get around to that. We're both so out of the playoffs. We are, we are, we're <laughs> suffering. So, you know, for me it was really about, how do I gain my life back? So I'm like, okay, I, need to, I know I need to hire some people. And I was playing softball, of course, because what else do you do? In the outfield with another outfielder. And uh, I was like, hey, what do you do? She's like, oh, I'm do, I do some bookkeeping for this. I've been with them for like 15 years, but they're closing the, the manufacturing plant and moving and whatever. And I'm like, hey, you want to work for me? She's like, sure. And you know, we're running out. And of course, I make her run after all the balls. Um, and she was a great, and she was a remote, 100% remote, right from my first person. And this was in 2011. Uh, when I brought her on. I had a, a partnership in between that and, uh, and I learned so much in that partnership and carried that on to, I call the third rendition of, of now Powerful Accounting. And I, and I really find that um, hiring people and making sure you have a lot of transparency, you have to have procedures in place for consistency, policies, and those are so important. And really over the last year is where we've really zeroed in on that because we found that I say one thing and then I expect something different, right? Because we don't remember half the time what we're talking about, right? So I learned that I had to really structure my company. And in order to grow, I needed to structure it and literally document. And so the applications are, were, were kind of for me an easy transition. I'm very open-minded to technology and it's really important. So, um, but growing a company is, is not an easy road. You just have to know, and I, and I loved it, you have to sacrifice. It's going to be sacrifice. And then, and then the QuickBooks side of this. I mean, so the like, QuickBooks yeah. side, yeah, absolutely. And that transit, I, I was on the Intuit Accountant Council back in 2008. And because, and the reason why I went is um, I had met someone who was, had done a certification in QuickBooks and her name was Leslie Capacetti. She's one of my favorite QuickBooks Pro Advisor people in the world. She's like a mentor to me. And I went up to her and I said, how, how did you get this training gig? Like, and plus you have a really nice sweater. I, it says Intuit on it, how do I get one of those, right? And I just talked to her about it. She said, you got to get on the council, Brolin. Get on the council. And so I did. And then I got on the Trainer Writer Network. And so QuickBooks for me, I've been really part of, part of their team in growing products mm -hmm. um, and working with them in their development. And, and QuickBooks is just, and we don't do, use any other accounting software. We use QuickBooks, that's it. And you know why? Because we, we, we don't have to do anything else. Mm -hmm. And that's, in, you know, people are like, oh, but aren't you kind of like limiting yourself to one software? No, I'm, I'm using the best software there is. Why wouldn't, you know, why do I need to go to a different, a different company? And it's been a great relationship. Did you have to fire any clients when you made this move? 
Unfortunately, we've, I, it's funny you ask that because so we have a folder structure, we use Smart Vault for our document storage and when a client Either we fire them or they leave. We move them into an old client file folder and I scroll through it every once in a while and I'm like, wow, that's a lot of people. I want, <laughs> am I that bad? You know, and I'm thinking about it, but yes, yeah, so it's tough to fire a client and, and we really, if they're not seeing value in us, we, we say, listen, why don't you, you just want a bookkeeper. You don't want someone who is consulting with you and helping you grow your business. You, you just want to collect a paycheck every week and there's nothing wrong with that. But I don't feel like we're giving you enough value Right, and, and, right. I, and I take that very personally, every single client. I want them to have value. And if they're not seeing it, it's not, it's not healthy for anybody. So last impressions before we have to go. Your thoughts here at the show. I thought we had five hours. We do, but. Okay. I know, I get you. I this, got is the, this is the East Coast feed. That's right. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll do the Asia Pacific feed later. <laughs> later. Impressions okay. of the show. How many years have you been coming? Well, it's only been a couple of years, but kind of yeah. what, what does this represent as a support uh, and resource for you trying to grow your business. So I love that you asked that, and, and the reason for that is I feel like this is like a family reunion for me. Um, I'm very good friends with a lot of the application partners here, and we see each other at conferences. My fellow colleagues that I was either on a council with or were, you know, on Facebook or doing something. We just really get to see each other um, and learn. And the speakers are amazing and inspiring. Mm -hmm. Like we need that refueling. And I remember the first conference that I had, had gone to uh, years ago and I just was like, wow, if I got out of my office and came to something like this, like there's something bigger than me, right? Because you just, you're just in your office and you're working and you're just trying to get work done. But then you come and people are so nice and like friendly and it's a big family reunion here. And I'm and, and so honored to be part of any of it, you know, so. Well, uh, you told me that the only thing you use a file cabinet for is to put your t-shirts in. Your Absolutely. So. Probably an XL, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, you're probably, yeah, yeah about an, an XL. XL. No, and, and we I'll, actually sell our that. loot. We sell it and we donate it to a charity. Even better. So one of our staff uh, picks the charity and we just, and we just, and we give, we pass it on. Put That's mine great. on Jeff's tab. I will, <laughs> yeah, no, I'll take his credit card when we get off, when we get off the All stage. Right. Don sure. Brolin uh, from Powerful Accounting. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. It was me. high energy. Hey, we got to do yeah, it. We, We're going to crush it out. We did Absolutely. Crush it. Very good. I appreciate Back it. with more here on theCUBE in San Jose in just a moment. Awesome. Thank <laughs> you.